breaking news from the normally placid nation of Norway. Where A grisly chronology is emerging from Norway after what appears to have been an elaborate and meticulously planned mass killing. That horrific assault came as a car bomb shattered downtown Oslo, the Norwegian capital. I mean, literally, as the last word came out of his mouth, I felt a buzz in my pocket. This is my story and personal recollection of the events that took place in Norway on July 22nd, 2011. I was staying at, I believe it was the Radisson Blue Hotel. We started out doing things that were near the hotel, so we walked down to the Opera House, and you can walk on the roof of the Opera House and just get a magnificent view of Oslo and the fjords. Looking around from the rooftop there, we were kind of able to get our bearings and uh, we headed over to the Viking Ship Museum. And man, you really get to see how well built these Viking ships are, but also in relation to the size of the ocean, those trips had to be brutal. The next day arrives and we decide to take a cruise up the fjords. I recall a brief layover and we had to change ships in the village of Flum. And then we uh, proceeded up the fjord to another village, Gudvangen. And I also recall there's a train ride in there, but I'm not exactly sure where that train was in relation to Gudvangen. But we got to see a lot of amazing waterfalls, and there was even a show at one of the waterfalls. The train would stop, and uh, you could look out the window and, and see a performance by a young lady there. The glaciers were this color of blue that you just normally don't see in nature. I remember being awestruck. So we ended up in this amazing historical village. And, uh, you know, you get to see all the things that you kind of envision, like the houses with grass on top, these fascinating architected uh, places of worship. That pretty much took up our whole day. You know, the following day, we tried to do some more touristy stuff around Oslo there the baby statues. If you haven't been to the park with the baby statues, it's uh, it's amazingly fascinating and then also a bit weird in the same sense, but it, there is some history behind it. And that same day, we also managed to get into the Nobel Peace Prize Museum as well as go tour the ski jump at Holmengolen. That's right, that ski jump is not in Lillehammer. It's right there in Oslo and it is iconic. We always took time to stop and grab a beer or two here and there. We went back to the hotel and managed to plan a trip to Sweden the following day. And we had a great time just kind of palling around Karlstad there and looking at some of the museums and monuments. Norway gained their independence from Sweden, so depending on which country you're in, the monuments and statues reflect their perspective. It was a pretty long train ride out there, and I remember talking to a lady there that uh, said she had met Elvis in the United States back in the 60s, I believe, and uh, that kept us uh, entertained while we were taking the train back to Oslo. And the following day was a work day, so I had to uh, head into work for the next week. So Friday rolls around, and I'm pretty excited because I'm actually leaving work early. I think somewhere around 2, 2.30, I think I started making my way out to the bus stop in Lee Soccer. And this part, I remember like it just happened one minute ago. The bus driver came on the intercom system and said there had been a bombing in Oslo. And I mean, literally, as the last word came out of his mouth, I felt a buzz in my pocket. I reached down to slip the cell phone out of my pocket, and I noticed I had a text message. And the text message was from the safety and security team at the company that I worked for, and they were asking if I was in a safe place. I had no clue, you know, where the bombing was actually located and how close was it to our hotel and where we were going to be able to get into our hotel. You know, all those things were kind of running through my head at the time. I don't know what happened next, but somehow probably I turned the TV on and started to get more and more information. And it was later in the day before I even realized there was a second part of the attack that occurred on Utoya Island. In the meantime, curiosity got the best of me, and so we walk up uh, Karl Johans Gata, and somehow we end up on Akersgata. And I think we walked a little bit down Greensen, 
and a few more roads. Anyhow, we knew we were kind of in the thick of things because we could tell, and there was certainly a police and military presence. You could definitely tell there were some windows blown out in some of the buildings. So I think it ended up being a bomb made of fertilizer that uh, was uh, in a van parked under one of the buildings. We were still learning information about what was going on on the island of Utoya. So we didn't have a lot of details around that and really didn't know a lot about it until later that night and the following day. We found out later that uh, there was a youth camp being hosted on Utoya Island at the time for the Labor Party. And, you know, sadly, most of the people that were, were killed on that island that day were kids. And in the somberness of the following day, it was amazing the amount of support from the Norwegian people and from other countries. And it seems like you couldn't walk 50 feet in Oslo that day without seeing these huge memorial of flowers. I do recall on that Sunday, we were walking up Carl Johans, got the a crowd of people caught my eye and I walked over to the Oslo Cathedral and started videoing. At the time, I didn't know who this family was, but they seemed pretty important. In this particular video footage and pictures, you'll see Queen Sonja of Norway along with the Crown Prince and Princess and their children. And I know also Jan Stoltenberg was the Prime Minister at the time. I believe we just had missed him entering the building, which I think he also kind of entered the building with the king, uh, which from my understanding now was actually on crutches at the time. And by the way, one of the targeted individuals in that car bomb was the prime minister. And remember earlier in the video when I said it couldn't be a better day to be in Oslo. And just as with some European countries, Scandinavian countries tend to take a lot of holiday around the periods between July and August. Mr. Prime Minister probably escaped his death that day because he wasn't at work. On July 22, 2011, a right-wing extremist named Anders Breivik killed 77 people, eight killed by car bombing in Oslo, 69 massacred on the island of Utoya. Anders Breivik is currently living in a Norwegian prison where he's serving out his 21-year sentence and his last parole request denied.